good evening students uh, as has already been told by dr dipender today's session is on a case short case of hand injury and uh, ashu dr ashu would be interacting with me on this case so let us start right in the beginning <clears throat> the history of this uh, 20 year old girl was that she suffered a knife cut injury 3 months ago and following that she has now inability to grip objects properly ever since so it is a 3 month old injury and uh, the problem here is inability to grip objects uh, properly since that time and this is the picture this is the clinical picture of the hand of this patient it is the right dominant hand and what we find here uh, can dr ashu pick up the findings here hello good evening sir good evening good evening uh, sir uh, there seems to be uh, atrophy of the hypothenar eminence oh uh, well i'm pointing towards this and this okay okay, okay so these are the uh, injury marks yeah this is the this scar mark okay these are the two scar marks yes, of sir. the injury suffered by this patient as she told us that she was injured with a knife okay yes sir so uh, what do you think about this scar is it a primarily healed scar or a secondarily healed scar that is the first thing your on inspection itself you can have a lot of information this seems to be healed by primary intentions yeah so it is a primarily healed scar both the scars seem to be healed by primarily primary intention there was no infection seemingly because it's a very clean linearly healed scar so uh, once we see this and this patient has told us that she is unable to grip objects what would be the next step that you would like to what else would you like to know in these patients you see this scar here what all structures can be injured if you if you think on those terms then things become start becoming easy looking at the location of the scar yes. what do you think would be the structures which are likely to be injured by this injury so first it can be a flexor tendon injury very good so there can be a flexor tendon injury what else so what are the tendons here which would likely to be get injured sir uh, flexor uh, distorum superficialis yes, and uh, profundus and... of uh, the fourth uh, finger <clears throat> of the uh, of the ring finger yes okay let us use common terminologies yes, okay sir. or you can say the fourth mm -hmm. digit you can say say fourth digit or the ring finger and along with that what are, what other structures can be injured what other structures can be injured or well, just can, can be injured. yeah just uh, in juxtaposition to the tendons what are the other structures uh the lumbricals or the palmar interosseae muscles can be injured palmar interosseae uh, and lumbrical bulk of the muscles is somewhere here okay yes sir what are the other structures you see if we move from superficial to deep in this area then what are the you see interosseae palmar interosseae are 
uh, at this stage they will become tendinous you won't find the and they are now moving dorsally in this area they are moving dorsally because they have to go to the dorsal expansion yes but on the volar surface what are the other structures so the the other structures here are the the digital nerves and the digital blood vessels they are on either side of the flexor tendons there are nerves and blood vessels traveling which are placed somewhere here on the volar surface on the lateral side of each digit there is a neurovascular bundle traveling here so there is by looking at the location of the scar at least the radial neurovascular bundle seems to be at risk okay so similarly on the little finger again there is a scar and through this scar uh, there is a possibility that the flexor tendons and the radial neurovascular bundle is the structure which could have been injured so look keeping in mind that these structures are located in the in the depth of this scar what would you now like to see uh, i would like to check the movements of the uh, mcp joint and interphalangeal joints sir and so very good so that means you will ask the patient because she said she has difficulty in grasp so you'll ask the patient to do some sort of a grasp and release isn't it yes sir so but apart from that what else would you like to know as far as the history is concerned in this patient that is the examination part but in the history what else would you like to know sir mechanism of injury and the time since injury very good mechanism she has told us that it is a knife cut injury but something more related to the mechanism so the clue here is that we want to know the position of the digits during the injury that means was the hand in the clenched fist position you see you must have seen in uh, so many times in hindi movies that uh, the villain is trying to use a knife on the hero and the hero catches the blade of the knife with his hands okay so it is what is the importance of this we'll soon come to know but okay. along with this because if the hand is extended the level of injury of the tendon is something different if the hand is flexed that means the the tendons the long flexor tendons have moved uh, too much into the hand part so there is a difference in the level of injury apart from this you see we always try to find what was the initial treatment received so the initial treatment received so if there is a if there is a wound anywhere in the in the upper limb uh, the patient may volunteer that there were some uh, some some deeper structures like nerves or blood vessels which were damaged and the in the first surgery itself they have been repaired so then uh, you this additional information is important but in in this particular case she told us that only skin sutures were given there was nothing else done and she was sent home so now this is the importance of if if there there is a blade injury or a knife injury to the base of the finger or in the palm in our, as in our case what is going to happen is uh, if you look at the 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 injury has occurred proximally in the finger but look at the flexor digitorum profundus in the distal portion the distal stump of the flexor digitorum profundus as the moment the finger is extended it is 
or rather it will be automatically extended once both the sublimis and profundus have been damaged. But the distal segment gets retracted so far distally. I hope this is clear to you. Sir, what, is the, sir what is the reason for this sir, during the flexion of the finger? You see, you try to the... flex, you try yeah. to, when you flex your, when you flex your finger, you try to flex your finger, when you flex okay. your finger, by virtue of the, the tendon is moving in this direction, isn't it? Only then the finger will be flexed. Yes, sir. So if the tendon is moving in this direction, then large part of the tendon which is occupying the finger is now uh, uh, coming into the palm. Okay. You get my point? It's moving yes, from here to here and then it gets cut. Okay. So when it gets cut, it will retract, isn't it? Yes, sir. So that is the reason that in a clenched fist position, if there is a knife injury, or if the patient tells you that, because this patient volunteered when he asked her whether, uh, how, what was the mechanism? So she said her brother was fighting with her and he sort of uh, showed her a knife and she held the knife. She held the knife with her hand and that is how the injury occurred. So this is what is the importance if the if otherwise the injury occurs with the fingers extended, then this phenomenon will not occur. Okay. Okay. Yes. So now, how will you examine this patient? You have already told us that you will look for grasp and release. Okay. So this is the video of this patient. Look at it carefully and let me know what, what is your impression. I'll play it again. You have a look at the ring and the little finger because those are the fingers which are damaged. What do you find? So, sir, there is a reserved flexion at the MCP joint in both the ring and the little finger, but in the yeah. proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal interphalangeal joint, of the ring finger, the flexion is not possible. Whereas in the uh, li little finger, the proximal interphalangeal joint flexion is possible and distal interphalangeal joint flexion is not possible. Very good. So what is the information that we are getting out of it? What is the possible information? You are very uh, right. The MP joint is getting flexed for the ring finger. But yes. the PIP joint as well as the DIP joint are not getting flexed. Whereas the similar situation is there in the little finger, except that the PIP joint is also getting flexed, but the DIP joint is not getting flexed. So what is the inference that we can draw mainly from this just by asking the patient to make a make a fist Sir, as far as the ring finger is concerned it seems that both the flexor distorum superficialis and profundus has been injured or they are not in continuity and very good uh, in the little finger sir uh, the flexor distorum superficialis uh, seems to be somehow in continuity but the flexor distorum profundus seems to be uh, in discontinuity very good i think you have uh, uh, your in interpretation is absolutely correct and this is what is being indicated by this part of the examination and it is a very important part of the examination 